Welcome everyone. We're... There we go. Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, yeah, really happy to yeah, meet a lot of you and I hope you're already enjoying the, uh, the internship. So today we coordinated with Becky to do a short training with a few of us. So today there are a few people from Hot Tech and we've identified, um, a, so we have an hour and a half, but the main thing I wanted to say for the uh, agenda today, it's very open. So if you have any questions as we go along, you can stop us. Uh, you can type in the chat is really an opportunity to yeah to give like all the knowledge from the team on what's relevant to you uh, and what we have as a as a plan for today uh, with a few members from the team uh, first we'll do a quick menti and i'll show you just maybe more for fun and to uh, to get kind of an, an icebreaker and then the plan for today, I'll do a very brief introduction just so that you know, I mean, some of you might have met others from our technical team uh, in coffee chats or not, uh, but just to give you very, very kind of how level who we are and hopefully in the future you can you know, keep in touch with different people. Uh, one of the topics then that Rob will talk about is tag value appropriateness. He'll go in more detail, but I know there was interest about kind of uh, completeness of data, and I think uh, the specific topics that Rob can talk in more um, more detail, and Emmy as well, because there's a bit of work in our team. Uh, and there were three tools that we wanted to briefly pick up on, based on some of your feedback that I know Becky um, Becky uh, shared. Uh, Open area tasking manager expert tool, and we, we can be quite flexible on this as well. So before we go. Uh, I, uh, I don't know if you've used Menti, Be maybe Becky will tell me because it's something we use a lot at HOT. Um, but yeah, it's just, there's a few questions that I've added there. So you can either scan the code that you can see on the screen or you can type www.menti.com and enter the code. So I'll give you a few, uh, a few minutes and yeah, Becky can help if you're, uh, if you're not familiar with this. You can either do it on your, phone or also on your um, laptop if you just type that with, uh, with the code. Um, I'll give it a few more seconds and then we can go. Let me switch my screen just a second. You can see the same, uh, the same slide. I'll just quickly refresh it. See how many of you are there. Okay, I'll assume that most of you are in. I'm not sure if I can see that. So the first question that we have, let me click on the slide. Yes. Okay, so if you're in the Menti, what will be, we thought would be quite interesting, some of our team have done this. Um, where in the world do you feel like home or where, where you're based now? And you can add the place on the map and hopefully we can see it. There we go. Oh, we, we have one person already. Um, oh, great. I can see the number here. Wow. Yay. See, we work with maps, so we thought, well, uh, Oh my God, I love this. Maybe we'll take a, we'll take a screenshot to see if we match all continents, yay. Uh, and and this amazing, amazing. Great, East, West. Wow, well, thanks for everyone for joining at this time because <laughs> it's different time zones for all of you. Amazing, wow. Oh, I love this. We can take a, yeah, we'll take a screenshot of this afterwards. Brilliant. Well, great. Oh, wow. Actually, from I've done this a few times, and this is the most diverse group, so it's amazing. Uh, great to have. Okay, one more second. Perfect. Great. Great to have you all here. So the next uh, question, I think we hopefully have everyone, 17 people joined. Great. So, this one is a fun one. We all love emojis. So which emoji best describes your current mood? It can be, you know, we're all the same coffee, you know, drinking coffee, you can be excited, tired, sleepy. Type out and see <laughs> what comes up. Hopefully the screen has refreshed for you as well. 
Oh, look, happy, brilliant. Excited, yeah. <laughs> Others can help me with the uh, the moods. Brilliant, great, love it. Yeah, see more smiley faces. Oh, <laughs> good. We all like emojis. At least I do. So, uh, good, 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 good. Amazing. Thank you for participating, everyone. Okay, and then I have three more questions. So the next one is more moving into our uh, awesome uh, world and tech. So again, don't worry about like, which I'm sure a lot of you are using already some too. So you can type in some answers, like which do you mainly use, whether it's now you've learned about or you've used before. Um, so type in and you can answer, answer many um, and many answers. Mapillary, Josem, amazing. Perfect. Task manager. Wow, there we go. I need to learn more on Josem. So <laughs> amazing. Mapillary. Great. Oh, see, we have a lot of, yeah, similar to this. Okay. Perfect. Thank you everyone for engaging. Um, right, so hopefully you might learn about more today. So the next, uh, just move on now into the next one, which is, uh, which ones do you want to learn more about? I know you've mentioned already, we'll talk briefly about like open area map and expert two, but if you think of anything added in here, we will try and cover in the training or if not, it'll be good to, uh, yeah, to hear from you and have more follow-ups. Or if you don't know, don't worry as well. Um, the few things we've added was, yeah, kind of OSM tools is very, yeah, very broad. Overpass, I mean, Robo mentioned and Amy more about that. So, Panero, not great. Just now, this time. Perfect. Okay, great. Okay, DK hopefully is in the session already and you can hear more about Open Area Map Street Complete. Great. I'll, um, I'll note those as we go into the different question section as well. Um, yeah, great. Thank you, everyone. I'll keep it open as well so you can add afterwards as well. All right, Rob, I'm taking a note about overpass, so I will mention this as you speak. Expert to brilliant. So a lot of it we're covering today. Okay, last question, and then we move on uh, to the training. So the last one, I would say, hopefully it's a fun one, but imagine you are an OSM2. So which one would that be? You can be your own new one, or you want to impersonate tasking manager and uh, Joe's MC, or maybe you, you will be that. Uh, so yeah, this is more a fun, fun one we've done uh, before with other sessions as well. You can all be Joe's, I mean, uh, ID. Oh, wow, there we go. We'll have human versions of it. Okay. Um, keep, oh, OSM central database. Oh, I love this. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we can have servers, we can have editors. Yeah, street view, amazing. All right. Um, I'll keep this open as well on the training side and all that, and we can, yeah, get some of that info. But thank you so much for, hopefully you found it fun. Um, so let's move into um, what we wanted to cover today. And as I was saying, I'll, yeah, we'll keep an eye on the, chat if there are any questions feel free to uh feel free to stop us so it's really the idea is to for it to be an interactive session so what i wanted to start with is just give you a very very high level of i'm sure you've had trainings with different teams within hot and you've met different people uh, so the hot tech team i know you've seen the next slide a bit more information about who we are 
But what I will pursue or think of it as high level is creating just as in justice tech to amplify connections between humanitarian needs. So I think that's something that's quite important when we when we think of all the technology that we are using and open map data um, within that aspect at the very high level. And as you know, the tools ecosystem is very, there's a lot um, in it, but I think it's really important to think of that connection between humanitarian needs and open data. So as you know, we had a map earlier on, uh, this will just give you an idea. Now our tech team, and I'm sure in the next slide, I'll also call on a few people who are in the session can say hello and you would hear from more in the training. Uh, we're all based in different, different locations, as you know, with a lot of staff at HOTS, but maybe you're based in a location uh, where some of our team is. But as you can see, uh, yeah, we're a global team. I think it's 14 of us now, but we are as well uh, based in different parts, um, different parts of the world. Um, this slide is, you would meet, I would tell you, and maybe I'll call on people as we go along, but that can be helpful just to have an understanding of the people as well. Um, we're working on the, yeah, on the different tools at Hot Tech. So um, on Tasking Manager, uh, we'll briefly mention that as well, and I'm sure you're familiar with Tasking Manager. We have Ramya, who is now our product owner, Amy uh, and Diana, and uh, yeah, maybe Amy, uh, and I'm not sure, I can't see now on my screen or in the session, but maybe you can briefly say hello um, on, uh, yeah, if you're in the session. Or in yes, the chat directly. Okay. Hi, hi. Hi, everyone. Hi. I'm Amy, I'm from Argentina, and I work at the tech team as a senior developer. Good. Good. Uh, yeah. And Rami is yeah, working now on Tasking Manager, I think. Then we have on uh, artificial intelligence, we're not going to cover a lot of it. Um, and we have Omran and Kshitish is also working on Export tool that you would hear about. Um, uh, yeah, Kshitish, maybe you can briefly say hello as well. Hi, everyone. I'm Kshitish, I'm from Nepal, and I'm a backend developer at all. Great. And then open aerial maps. So we have uh, Cristiano, who is not here, but D DK, as you can see, is also um, like in our DevOps team and he works on open aerial map and you'll hear today a bit more from him. So yeah, DK, you can also briefly maybe say hello. Hi, I'm DK. Uh, I'm, I'm based out in New York and, and like I just said, I'm the DevOps manager at HOT. Um, so all the services that we run uh, are running on the cloud and uh, we our team makes sure that uh, they are up to date running well maintained uh, and and available to everyone thank you dk yeah and you would hear more from dk also bit on open area map then we have yogesh uh, who's now based in the uk afi in ghana marisalin is based in kenya and she works more on it and then you can see on the slide as well, you would hear just in a second more from Rob, but he would introduce himself. He works on mobile, but he's kind of our tech advisor. So uh, loads and loads of experience that he'll share. Uh, Kristen from our team is also working on mobile. Um, Lean is our interim director, who's giving more on the direction. You can see on the aid on the engagement side, myself and Sina from our team um, as well. So we're kind of the connecting people you can always reach out if you have any questions. So before I move into Rob, there are a few uh, what we call kind of core products that now we're currently working on. So that's Tasking Manager, Open Area Map, um, Export Tool, and something that we call FAIR. There are a few blogs that we can share with you more recently, but there was more to come next year uh, related to using artificial intelligence and machine learning as well for uh, for mapping and predicting, um, making it more efficient for, um, for mappers as well. So I'll stop here and I'll hand over to Rob who can introduce himself. But if you have any questions, please add more in the chat. So Rob, over to you to yeah, introduce yourself and uh, yeah, talk more to the interns about tag value appropriateness. And I'll switch on the slides as you speak. Okay. Yeah, so my name's Rob. I'm based in the Rocky Mountains of Colorado. 
so pretty far west and I'm just waking up. I'm sorry if I'm a little uh, overly informal um, and stuff like that. But yeah, I was going to talk about tag um, appropriateness a little bit. So one of the advantages and disadvantages of OpenStreetMap is the fact that you can add actually any tag value that you want. Um, this is extremely flexible. At the same point as it's kind of a problem because sometimes people invent tags that um, aren't super commonly used. They don't have any additional meaning to people and things like that. And so sometimes a lot of data cleaning is just replacing some obscure tag with something that's a lot more clear and concise and, um, and accurate and things like that. Um, and then finding them is always the fun part. Oh, there you go. So the one tool that nobody mentioned in the other slide um, that I use actually is called LSM Inspector. Um, there's actually a plugin for JOSM for this. And OSM Inspector is kind of interesting. So when you look at things like um, OSM CHA and some of the other tools, they're typically um, working on a little bit of data, um, like typically a change set level. And so the nice thing about OSM Inspector is it kind of works more on bulk data. And so it's got a lot of different quality checks, everything from um, highway problems, um, building geometry problems, tag values, and everything. Um, you can see that the little menu on the left of the screenshot has got a whole lot of things you can kind of turn on and off so you can focus on specific things. Um, one of the things that this tool does that nobody else does is a thing we call um, orphan highways. So when we do satellite uh, remote image mapping, um, a lot of times people are tracing highways, but if they don't connect the end node of the highway they just added to the existing main road, then um, navigation doesn't work. And so we call those orphan highways. And so it may look visually like it's connecting, but you actually have to physically connect the new highway to the existing one. And this program actually finds a lot of those. It finds bad address problems and things like that. So I actually use this pretty often. Um, and it was interesting too, because the other day I looked at my own local area where I thought I'd cleaned it all up and it kept finding a few new things I had forgotten about. Um, this still does find a lot of stuff, so it can kind of drive you slightly crazy because you look at OpenStreetMap and everything's full of um, bugs, so to speak. But sometimes it's just good to, to know when to move on and do another area. Uh, next slide. Good. And yeah, if people, I'll just say, if people have questions about this, feel free to, yeah. 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 So, so there's a couple of really uh, rough ways of looking for bad tag values. So one of the things I'd like to do is rather than using um, overpass turbo all the time, which has issues with size limitations and things like that, um, I like to just download a file from Geofabric. Geofabric mm -hmm. is a German company that does a lot of open street map software and stuff. And they actually make a available a file for every country on the planet every 24 hours. And so as corny as this sounds, you can actually download that file and just grep it. Grep is a Unix tool for just searching for strings. So that particular command line right there will find every value for the building tag in all of Tanz media, delete all the duplicates, and then only print out the unique things. And surprisingly, there should only be about 15 values for building. I mean, beyond building equals yes, there should be things like, you know, um, building equals hospital, yada, yada. And so this right now will find out all sorts of interesting values. Um, I have found things like building equals no, like why even tag it if there's no building there? Um, building equals building. I mean, you see a lot of interesting things. And so one of the ways, this is kind of a quick and dirty way to find those weird values and then go fix them basically. Um, and this is kind of crude, but it's also quick and dirty and easy. Um, yeah, you also see things like random capitalizations, embedded single quotes, um, spelling mistakes, you know, all that kinds of stuff. Um, actually, when it comes to highway names, I use whatever the street sign says. I don't really worry so much about what uh, other data sources say. So. Uh, next slide. It's funny I can't hit next from here. <laughs> so OSM filter is a similar tool. This is actually an open street map um, utility tool. Once again, this is kind of terminal based um, because typically for these things, you're not displaying all the data, although you could do that as well. So OSM filter is the same way. That says basically find every building tag within that file, which happens to be a shorter version of Tanzania, um, and then print those all out 
as, as well and things. And you can search for amenities and things like that. Sometimes it gets a little complicated because building equals hospital is legit. But these days we try to use amenity equals hospital. One of the fun things with OpenStreetMap is how the tag definitions have evolved over the years. So there's kind of a high level set. Some things are moving into different tags um, and stuff like that. But I do both of these if I'm just looking for weird tag values. Um, Amelia will talk about another project called Underpass that also does this kind of in real time. But this is kind of what I do if I'm just, you know, some days I do just get up in the morning and I'm like, oh, it's a Saturday. I have to like mapping. I'm going to go fix weird tag values. Unfortunately, yes, some of us do work weekends. <laughs> uh, next one. So one of the ways they're trying to figure out if a value is legit or not is another website that wasn't um, mentioned, which is called Tag Info. Now Tag Info, once again, it lists everything in OpenStreetMap, um, whether it's good or bad. And so what I try to do is you can see this little screenshot. It'll tell you how many times that that's used. I mean, most of the ones on this page are used like 300 times on the entire planet, which is not a whole lot of data. There's a column there that says wiki. That's kind of the important one. So there's an OpenStreetMap wiki page that kind of defines all of the approved community accepted tags and tag values. And so if that little check mark is there that it's on the wiki, well, at least that means it's probably a sort of openly discussed and community agreed tag value. Um, but there's a lot of stuff in tag info that's not in the wiki. So if you have a tag value and you're wondering if this value is appropriate, you can go to tag info. Um, now this is like several pages through it, but typically if it's not in the first couple of pages, you probably wanna use a different tag. I mean, while sometimes these very descriptive tags are really useful, if it's only used a few hundred times, None of the display apps find them. You know, most of the current tools aren't looking for obscure tag values and things like that. And so if I have a value, I'll go into tag info and look at how often it's used. And if you find something used several thousand times, it's probably pretty good. Um, but once again, as I said, as you go through all the pages, just because you have a tag and because a tag value is listed here, it may not always be the, the best value. Um, but I use this pretty heavily. Um, I've been doing a lot of work with data models lately. Um, oh, there's a typo, and that's my fault. <laughs> um, I've been doing a lot of work with data models lately, spending an awful lot of time in tag info, trying to pick the uh, appropriate values that are both descriptive and accurate at the same time. I think that was my, my last one, wasn't it? Nope, okay, last one. So the other one is, I don't know if you folks have been using a JOSM or ID editor. Um, JOSM is obviously more powerful than the ID editor, good and bad, but one of the nicest things about JOSM when I'm editing things, for instance, if I find all those bad tag values, um, I may print those bad tag values with a location loaded into JOSM and go fix it. So JOSM has a thing called the validator built in. To the best of my knowledge, it's like the only tool that has really an open street map validation. And then this runs on the data before you've uploaded it. Now, right now here, I validated a, a small chunk of data. None of this was anything I had added. All of this is already existing problems. But you can see things there. There's ways with no tags at all. Who knows what they can be? There's, you know, name with multiple values. There's, you know, all sorts of little things. And so typically when we are editing data, if we're using JOSM, we always run the validator to find their own mistakes. But a lot of time you can use JOSM to find everybody else's mistakes. Um, and as much as fun as it is to add data to OpenStreetMap, sometimes it's just fun to be what we call the janitor, just cleaning up, you know, other people's stuff. And it's kind of corny, but as I said, it's like cleaning out your garage. It's really boring and tedious, but feels really good when you're done. And so um, cleaning up old bad data is very useful. Because as I said, if it's got weird values, it doesn't get displayed. It doesn't show up in searches from either Overpass or any other thing um, and stuff like that. And I think part of the whole idea is that um, – Cleaning up the data is important. Um, I'll leave the story off here, but typically I found um, that I'd rather have no data than bad data because when I have no data for something, uh, doing an emergency response, for example, um, I figure it out on my own. But if I have data and I trust it, it often leads me in the wrong place. Um, I wrecked a fire truck like that once. I was not driving. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of, of having really high quality data. And that I think was my last slide. So I'll, I'll stop to see if there's any questions. And people are always welcome to find me in Slack and email later as well. Yes, um, to stop sharing my screen so we can, uh, yeah, we can look into uh, 
to the chat. So have people, we can share as well, Becky, the slides, but have people heard of all those tools? So if they have questions, if you have questions, that would be interesting to find out. I have no idea. I just can see Ralph saying, Josen Validator is champion. Uh, so, yeah, so let's, uh, let's see, you can raise your hand or it would be good to get a sense if Rob can also share a screen, I think, if there's anything specific on some of those tools. Um, quality data, okay. So let me look through the chat. So Raf is also mentioning pain styles. I've never heard of it, but I'll um, write this down. Uh, yeah, I see the one question. question. So, yeah, so OSM Inspector is nice being web-based and that everything is basically what you're used to. You just toggle various things on and off. I think it's probably pretty easy to navigate. So when you, you'll, the top pull-down menu says, oh, I want to check tag values. Oh, I want to check building geometry. Oh, I want to check, check highways. And so you select that kind of feature grouping. And then from there, it'll pop up an entire menu of what you want to look for. Um, it's literally got hundreds of options. It'll drive you a little bit crazy at, at first. Um, but it's is pretty powerful and pretty useful. On, the, on it now, or maybe we can follow up. Like, is there anything we can share as an example? <laughs> I don't want to put you on the spot. Yeah, um, and I think if people just go to the website, um, they'll find it's pretty simple. Um, I could be wrong. I'm a systems engineer, but I think it's pretty simple to use. Mm -hmm. And I find at first, I turn off a lot of stuff because you get buried in all of the things that it finds. But sometimes it's overly picky. So it's really fun to have a clean mapping area from OSM inspector, but it can be a lot of work. Um, something you do on over many rainy weekends. <laughs> and there's a plugin for JAWS and it does the same thing, which is very, very useful. Okay. Does that answer your question, Shaban? Or maybe uh, you can always, of course, follow up just with Rob directly if it's a specific um, question. Now you know <laughs> who to speak to. Uh, okay, we have another question, Rob. Tag info versus OSM Wiki. What are their major differences? So, yeah, that's a, that's a great and easy question. So, the Wiki is stuff that has typically been reviewed by the community. So, when somebody wants to create a tag, not so much in the early years, but if somebody wants to create a tag, you write a proposal on the Wiki. You say, hey, here's the tag, here's the values. The community discusses it sometimes quite uh, uh ferociously. There's a thing called a tagging email list where we beat these things out. And then when a tag gets approved, it goes on the wiki. So pretty much anything on the wiki is, these are the tags we prefer people use. Um, mind you, um, when you look at tag info, you see every tag that's ever been used, whether or not they're on the wiki or not. And I think that's kind of the difference. So the wiki is what stuff that's kind of community improved as well. And then the um, Tag info is like, here is how often something has been used. Um, and sometimes you may want something more, slightly more descriptive. But um, to be honest, I said, if you get too detailed as much as that, that is nice. Nothing displays it, nothing finds it in a query, and it kind of becomes a useless effort. Hopefully. Does that answer your question? We can feel free to follow up. But yeah, yeah, I think yeah. what you said, Rob, like the community approval, I don't know the details, but that's, I think, the difference, yeah. right? There's a specific process for uh, just looking through other questions. We have comments from uh, Ralph on the end, the OSM yeah. inspector. Um, good. Yeah, and then there's that one on tagging dynamics. So what happens is every feature has a version. So if you have something that says building equals no, and you come by and you say, actually, this is an archeological ruin. So I'm gonna say building equals ruin, historic equals yes. Um, then it just up increments the version number. And, and so the old value is still there if you do historical data, but it's not there in the current data. And there's a big difference between historical data that maintains everything versus the kind of the snapshot about the current value. Um, and then we have actually tools at Hop that we'll, we can actually analyze the changes and watch how things improve. Mm -hmm. um, hi, hi, Rob. I have a question. Is it possible to get a tag in tag info and then you don't get it in, uh, in OSM Wiki or all the tags that are, ta are in tag info are in OSM Wiki? Yeah, so um, every tag that's on the Wiki page 
is you'll see in tag info, typically the first couple of pages if you're doing a search, but there's a lot of stuff in tag info that is not on the wiki as well. Um, and that's the thing is that there is no hard, fast rule, so people can really add anything they want. And if nobody notices it, then it stays there for potentially a long time. Awesome. Doesn't it bring some sort of conflict? Um, sometimes you change a tag and it creates conflict with the original mapper. That's a whole nother topic. Um, most mappers are pretty uh, cooperative, but not always. Uh, just looking through the chat, did we answer this one question on what causes JOSEN to hide some errors? Um, I would exactly say JOSEN hides errors, it just may not find everything. I think there's a slight difference, or maybe I misunderstood the question. Um, like there's a few things JOSEN will do, it'll find orphan nodes, it'll find the orphan highways that aren't connected, it finds a lot of different stuff. And then there's a few other plugins for JOSM as well. There's a select building, duplicate building plugin. There's the Mapathoner plugin that we can use for fixing geometry and things like that. Um, JOSM is pretty much the tool you want to use if you spend a lot of time dealing with OpenStreetMap data, because it's the only tool that was actually designed for editing OpenStreetMap data, other than like mobile, Street Complete, and Vespucci. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Der I'm not sure how to pronounce your name on the hiding. Um, unless you meant something else, please do type in the chat. Anything else from others on those? Like we'll share the slides and yeah, just be interesting to know, like I'm learning obviously about those, but if you're already using them or if you have uh, specific questions. Okay, if not now, you can reach to us later as well. Um, so for um, for the next section, we wanted to, uh, uh, we have TK, so we wanted to, and I, some of you typed as well, a bit about open aerial maps. So you wanted to learn a bit uh, more and I've um, added like a few slides on it. So DK can, can do a brief introduction. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you can ask any questions. But yeah, keep the chat if you think of other questions as well to the uh, session. Rob did feel free to type in the in the chat. So, DK, over to you. I can share my screen again with the kind of first three slides on the high level overview, yeah. and then maybe we'll stop to see um, what questions people have or what you want to learn more, because probably you all have different knowledge of open area map. Yeah, that sounds great. We can start with the slides and then maybe if we wanted to, I could move over and share my screen for uh, a little. Yeah, um, uh, perfect. Yeah, like or... a live, live preview. I always yeah. think with tools, it's the best way. Good. Yes. Um, awesome. So yeah, I, it, sees the, it seems like there's a lot of interest with um, open aerial map. And I, I can see why, especially talking about things like data quality. Um, when it comes, you know, in my view, when it comes to data quality, uh, it's uh, it it start it starts at the very, you know, even before you get into into drawing polygons, it, it starts with looking at the imagery that you're using to trace. Um, and if you don't have high quality imagery, then it's hard. It makes it harder to uh, to to get high quality data. Um, uh, so that's where I think Open Aerial Map is really. Um, vital to uh, you know the the whole mapping workflow, um, and so I mean I'm I think all of you probably have done since you've done mapping you've been you've been looking at satellite imagery for um, however long you've been doing that and you probably even even earlier if you've been you know interested in mapping from from before then um, and uh, so open aerial map what 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 it was made for why it sort of came to be is because um, we really wanted to have this, this high quality mapping um, that's available to all, that is open um, in the same sense that we create software that's open. We also want the data and the imagery that we're creating um, in OpenStreetMap to be open. Um, because I think 
I, I don't know the numbers necessarily, but uh, uh, much of the, the data that's being created on OpenStreetMap apps actually is not coming from open imagery. Um, it's coming from uh, what I would say proprietary imagery, like from Bing or from Google um, or from Maxar or, or whatever, these sort of uh, closed data, but, but sort of provided openly um, through licensing or through other means, uh, but, but generally is not open imagery. It's not, uh, it's not open data. Um, and so why open imagery matters, um, just put it here, like it's easier to find and to use. Um, it's, it's out there. It's, it's able to be, to be searched and indexed and it's not hidden behind paywalls or anything like that. Um, it enables collaboration and response. It reduces like duplication, um, because it's, you've got, it's there. It's, it's, um, uh, yeah, it's open. Um, it allows open derivative data to be created. Like I was saying with open street maps and we're creating open data with open data. Um, uh, it promotes the innovative uses beyond the original purpose. If, if something is open to be used as a, a, an open license, then it has sort of, you have a lot of freedom to, um, to try new things with it. Um, that is a little bit more difficult if you've got something behind uh, some API that's not really um, accessible, uh, like, a, like Google's uh, street, uh, not street views, Google's satellite API or, or anything like that. Um, and it's a, it's a transparent resource. It can be used in many other ways, like science, uh, ML, AI, which is like all the rage right now. Um, so yeah, we, we find open imagery in more than just mapping, in more than just uh, uh, the use in OpenStreetMap has, has a myriad of uses and, and a myriad of uh, in, in infinite value. Uh, let's go to the next slide. Um, so with that basis, um, uh, next slide, please. Oh, there we go, perfect. Uh, we want to talk about um, the platform that we uh, we started uh, in 2015 or 2013 um, to be able to provide that open data, the open imagery out. Um, uh, it, is, it is an open repository of imagery. Um, and uh, it also has a, a set of tools for sharing and using uh, open satellite and drone imagery. Um, so obviously the, the, drone, the drone question has uh, become very big in the last few years, even in the last two years, it's it's really really gotten into everybody's hands, um, uh, and people are, are doing a lot of mapping with it. As sort of laws become a little bit more um, well understood and uh, uh, across the world, and, and people are able to, to get licenses and, and to be able to fly. Um, so uh, there's the map, which you can browse, search, and find. You can also um, take uh, a TMS link uh, on JOSM or ID. Uh, a tile map service link to plug that in, and you can you can open the imagery in uh, in Jossum. I, I do believe I don't know if it's still um, up to date or if it's been um, a bit maybe depreciated, but I do believe that there is a Jossum plugin for Open Area Map. Um, it maybe is not uh, functional at the moment, but it has been, and I think it, it would be great to have something like that uh, renewed in the future as we as we work you know, hot continues to work and improve uh, open area map. Um, but you can certainly just take a TMS link and add that to, to Jossum directly if you've got a, a single piece of imagery that you found. Um, there is an API for accessing the data, which I will go over probably pretty briefly. Um, and then of course, if you are a data creator, then if you're, if you're the one flying the drones or you're the one sort of uh, making satellite imagery public, if you're like a, a government agency or something, then you can actually upload or you can um, in other ways, uh, add, add the imagery to the open imagery network. Um, is that, there's only two slides, right? Uh, yeah, that's the link, I think. <laughs> um, so this is what it looks like. Actually, I think it'll be better if I just switch over to my screen. Let's do that. Uh, um, so we can, I'll do a quick dive into what open area map is. Uh, Pedro, can you see my screen? Yes, yeah. Okay, perfect. So um, uh, this is map.openairmap.org. Uh, as you can see here, there's imagery all over the globe. Um, let's go, let's go down to Kenya. Um, uh, I wanna, so, oh yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Actually, to um, my favorite place. 
uh, my internet is being a little bit slow, but uh, down to uh, Zanzibar, there's quite a lot of mapping that's gone gone out in uh, in Zanzibar. Um, hey, there we go. Um, the Zanzibar Mapping Initiative was one. Uh, so they mapped basically the entire the entire island, uh, this island, um, uh, and uh, processed it. I believe in um, this is all drone imagery. This was processed in um, uh, uh, Open Drone Map. Uh, and then uploaded via Open Drone Maps sort of web browser. Um, so you can basically come and look at a single piece here. This is just a thumbnail, uh, and we can zoom into uh, the imagery itself, and you can see uh, here it is. Um, and then you can see Open in ID Editor or Jossum. I don't have I don't have Jossum open right now, so I'm not going to grab. You can grab the TMS link, which is basically the same thing as opening it in JOSM or ID, or you can just grab it directly. Um, you can see sort of the metadata about it. It's licensed. And this is what we're talking about with open imagery. Um, uh, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, this is this is basically what it is. On the back end, what we've got is a, um, a, a, huge, a huge database of imagery. Uh, um, and a, a dynamic tiler, this is all cloud optimized geotiff, so a dynamic tiler that um, uh, that displays that. You can also download the imagery directly. Oh, oh gosh, um, no, I don't actually want to. Uh, as a TIFF, so if you wanted to open it in something like QGIS, um, uh, then you absolutely can as well. If you want to do like sort of what I was talking about, like scientific or geospatial analysis or anything like that. Um, so, Uh, now, sort of to get into a little bit of what um, uh, what people are asking about with the um, with the API. Let me find the API docs. Uh, so the API itself is just the interface between the database and um, and the uh, and and the map. Um, so what you can get is things like metadata, um, API.openAreaMaps.org/analytics. If you want, if you want to understand like you know real real backend stuff, um, uh, like the total number of images, we have two hundred seventy thousand images here. Um, and you can get into individual ones, uh, the sort of each individual one, if you want to do and have an understanding of like what uh, what the images are. Um, uh, I think there's metadata. Sorry, that, this is where we get into more of the metadata of each individual image. So you can look at this one. You can see sort of even the link of it, the name of it. This is this is sort of the API. If you if you're looking into um, uh, uh, analyzing this at all. And this is all sort of, um, you can curl, you can run this with curl or any other, um, any other way of getting an HTTP request. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you can, get the TMS link for a specific, uh, for a specific tile. Um, you do need to be authenticated for that. So you need to, um, go into your, uh, your profile and have a third, third your third party API token. Um, so not going to get too deep into, into this, but these, these are the ways to interact with, uh, with the OAM API itself. Um, and, and you can also use the API to do uploads. Um, you can certainly upload on from, uh, uh, oh, I am, I am logged in. Hold on. Uh, so the upload part, yeah, all of this accessible to the API, but uh, you can do it from the web as well. Um, um, so here, upload, I was trying to upload something earlier. Um, 
uh, and you need all this metadata and you can add more as well um, and select the license and then hit submit and upload. You can also, uh, I think at the moment, the best way to do it is to use the URL rather than a local file. Um, if you've got it like hosted on a Google Drive or a S3 or something. But um, yeah, I think that's all I've got, Petya. This open AI map, um, I, I, you know, if you're doing mapping in a particular area, I think it's worthwhile to check out open AI map to find if there is some recent imagery uh, uh, in, in the area that you're mapping. Um, there may be some open satellite imagery. There may, you may get really lucky and find a drone uh, some drone mapping from, I would say probably you don't want to, you know, fl um, uh, you don't want to um, fly a drone from, or uh, use a drone to map from 2016 as things move very fast. Uh, but it is uh, certainly a good historical data set. Um, uh, but yeah, that's um, that's what I got about about open AI map. Amazing. Thank you, DK. Um, let's stop maybe. I don't know the level of like whether people have used it before or this is brand new and maybe the like the info about the API uh, could be a bit more um, complex. But yeah, I saw Raf's comment about Josem has open area map by Contour because Contour is, yeah, we're collaborating with them on the um, interface. But yeah, any questions? Or maybe Becky, you could give us more of an idea if people have used it um, before. Um, um, I'm not really sure, but on my side, I have heard of it, but I've never really used it. Mm -hmm. um, please let us know in the chat if you've used Open Area Map in the past, okay? Or any questions? And again, I think with the session, you know, kind of people in the tech team who are DK, uh, be happy to. Yeah, I I, th I think one of the biggest challenges with Open AI Map is is simply that the 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 world is huge, and there's just not enough resources to for us to try and get really high quality imagery across all of it. Um, and so I, I think it would be really important for us at Hot to. Uh, you know, as, as a form of improving data quality to try and push more. Uh, if we have sort of specific mapping projects, like uh, I know I know there's one mapping um, camps, uh, like the um, camps in Kenya, uh, where they're, they're doing, you know, drone mapping and they'll get that on um, on uh, on open air map and get that all mapped um, uh, to, to include this sort of huge pipe, this sort of uh, first part of the pipeline to get that really high quality imagery through drone mapping uh, and then to sort of Im implement that from the very beginning of the mapping pipeline. Yeah. Thank you, DK. Yeah. Um, and I guess, Ralph, your comment is maybe about the plugin, right? The JOSM plugin for Open Area. Uh, okay, we have a question from Jen. Uh, if the date, do you know that decade, the date, yes. uh, metadata, yeah, refers to the fly date or upload date? Uh, uh, both. Uh, so there, there's both, there should be two dates, uh, uh, one for the flight date and one for the date uploaded. Um, uh, you would input the flight date manually and the, the date uploaded is included as metadata when, when you do the upload. Uh, the imagery data is then hosted by our cloud storage. Yes. When someone uploads imagery to our through through like our public um, open area map, it is added to our cloud storage. It is the way we've designed open area map is that if you had a sort of huge amount of data and you set it up in the in the right way with the proper metadata, um, you you could just sort of link it and plug it in and, and you can host it and it gets sort of added to the to the open imagery network. Um, so it's not necessarily true that all of the imagery data on open area map is on our cloud storage um, it could be in other places and linked up through uh through the imagery network um but for the, for the most part most of the images are on our on our cloud storage it's uh, uh yes that would be true thanks dk any other questions on open area map Let's see. No. Okay. Did um, they come did, 
And yes, okay, I think maybe you mentioned it earlier on, but I'm just wondering, does it only accept drawn imagery or any other type of imagery? Any type of of map imagery, I would say, it wouldn't be a, like it has to be basically the the, the criteria is that it has to be uh, a um, like a orthorectified geotiff or orthorectified image. So. What that means is that it has sort of map, it has a map information included in the metadata of of the of the geotiff, or I, th I think we only accept geotiffs. We might accept some other formats with, with metadata imagery, but um, for the most part, yes, it, it does have to be um, imagery. But how that imagery is created, whether it be satellite, drone, we've had kite people who've flown in kites and and uh, and taken images and and, and orthorectified it. Um, uh, uh, airplanes, sort of whatever it's, but I think it, it does have to be aerial in some way, uh, as in, um, you know, we're getting uh, images from the air or space rather. Okay. Um, I'll say maybe we move on and yeah, feel free to type in the chat but thanks so much dk it's really helpful uh yeah especially when you share your screen i think that's good people can then replicate um all right so i think for the next uh, half an hour we had I'm not going to talk a lot about task manager but i'll just give you kind of a brief update and i'm sure a lot of you are probably familiar with it and then the idea is to uh, talk briefly about export tool so I'll then hand over to Kshitish from our team just to give you a bit of an update and overview, maybe uh, Kshitish from the general user perspective. And we'll talk to you briefly about some kind of improvements we've done that now we're testing. So if you're interested, you can also, um, yeah, you can also get involved uh, in that. So just move back to the slides. Um, so on tasking manager, I just wanted to briefly update to, I'm quite sure <laughs> most of you, and I think we have Ralph as well in the group who is quite involved in those kind of uh, meetups as well. And like from the validator perspective, um, uh, when we talk about data quality, but as you know, the tasking manager is one of the big, like the flagship products that we are maintaining. And uh, since the start of the year, we are collaborating with um, the Kathmandu Living Labs team in uh, Nepal, who are really their developer team. and working on making any improvements to the actual product, to the actual technology. So what I wanted here to, um, yeah, just to share with you as an update or something, even after the internship, if you want to kind of keep, be part of the community, uh, those are the, like the mechanisms for you to, uh, to do that. Uh, as an update around like the tasking manager and there's loads of areas, maybe Amy can very, very briefly mention about Kind of focusing on like statistics or around data quality on the tasking manager so there will be improvements coming up in the next year and we are we are working with ramia from our team who is now the senior product owner for the kind of development of the tasking manager and consulting with the different users with people who are doing mapping validation and all that uh, but yeah on this slide you can see we have monthly uh, meetup so those are really for people who are using the tool and making sure we get that input and we collaborate or any improvements there are the slack channels that uh, you can definitely uh, you probably some of you already part of it i uh, can keep in touch and then um, i'll share those in the slides uh, now we write monthly blogs about updates to the tasking manager on OSM Discourse, which is another platform, uh, relatively new, but it's a place where uh, it's a forum where different discussions can take place, and we try and share that there, uh, and different uh, different blogs as well. So I think that's mostly what I briefly wanted to mention. I don't know, Amy, Amy from our team will be collaborating with Amy, Diana, and Ramia more looking going forward the next year on uh, kind of data quality. So I don't know, Amy, if you wanted to very briefly maybe mention, uh, not to put you on the spot, something around that, and then we'll move on to the export tool. Uh, yes, um, yes, we have plans to add some uh, new features to the task manager uh, for um, measuring uh, data quality. Uh, so 
we have plans to uh, start adding um, by the ne next year uh, some semantic validation, uh, like validating validating bad values uh, for tags um, or uh, also features that have no tags, like notes and uh, ways with without tags, and also um, features with incomplete tagging. Uh, so we are building in some definitions about what this means, what, what are considered a bad value, basically are tags that are not on certain list that we are building that we call uh, data models for tagging. Um, and also uh, which things we consider incomplete that are basically uh, the important tags that are required uh, and, are, and are missing uh, when the map edition of the map is uh, being doing. For example, uh, a, a place without a name uh, can be considered something that is uh, uh, a incomplete tagging because the name is very important in the in the case of the places. So we are building um, some data models and we, we are working on a um, data processing uh, engine that can process uh, the changes on the map um, with, uh, with that uh, produce um, reports about uh, what, uh, what is happening with the, with the tags. Um, so we plan to add uh, some uh, validation just about, sh just after the user edits the map on the task manager, uh, we can show problems with, uh, with, 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 with data, with uh, data quality. Uh, and also uh, after the uh, a project is, is finished um, or while the project is being performed, uh, reports to the project owner. Uh, so uh, we can see, we can show a overall view a report uh, about how the, that data quality uh, is, like a score for the different aspects of data quality. One is uh, the semantic validation, uh, basically work with tags. And the other part is the geometry validation that is uh, um, overlapping features, uh, also duplicate features uh, and also, but geometry that is uh, basically, for example, buildings that are not that, that have has sharp angles, uh, and other other aspects also about uh, geometry that we are uh, we are working on. So that is more or less what we are we are working on on the data quality for for the task manager. Thank you so much, Amy. Thank you. Now that's helpful. Yeah. So I think on this one, there's kind of more improvements if you think of it to come. Uh, I would say into um, into next year that can uh, yeah hopefully support you in your uh, your work even after the internship. Any questions on this? I'll just quickly check and then I'll uh, we'll talk about export too because that's another one that you were all interested in. Um, in hearing more. So tasking managers, just to give you a bit of context and kind of relevant groups that you can join. Uh, no, if there's anything, feel free, I'm just checking quickly. The, uh, Hi, Petya. Uh, yes. I just wanted to mention that I'm super excited about the new uh, tools that they're going to be, they're going to add in the whole tasking manager, especially the ones that are related to data quality. Looking forward to that, really. Great. Uh, um, yeah, I thought that would be a relevant group. So yeah, we're, um, we're excited about that. And I think one of the things that Amy talks about, like he'll be working a lot on this, but through the meetups and other ways, like we really want to make sure that whatever's added really meets the needs of the, like, people like you who are, <laughs> who are doing a lot of the data quality work. So um, yeah, we'll keep you involved hopefully as this, as this continues. Um, great, okay. So I'll just share one slide and then Kshitish maybe I'll uh, just very briefly, I'll actually hand over to you. Uh, let me just see if I haven't missed any. Uh, 
uh, anything in the chat. So the other thing that you've, I know you've mentioned was about export tool, and I've just had the euro here. <laughs> That's the main thing. So some of you might have used it, some of you might not have. So hopefully in this, um, uh, Krzysztof can talk a bit about like a lot of you who are maybe as general users, so there's different kind of functions of the export tool. Uh, but this is currently the link that you can access and there are quite a few changes and improvements, let's say in terms of faster downloads and things that uh, we can maybe try as well in this session that are now Kshitis uh, from our team has been working on and uh, and we're actually wanting like to get more people to to test that before we uh, we have that like live for for all different users. So. Kshitish, maybe I'll, I'll hand over to you and we can just, yeah, uh, if you're happy to yeah, share your screen and um, maybe showcase kind of one way of like creating an export and what some of the improvements. Let me just check. Yeah, sure. Can you hear me? Perfect. Yes. Hi. Yes, okay. we can. Yes, we can. Okay, expert tool. <laughs> so, um, is like a, maybe some of you are familiar with the expert tool or some of you are not. I'll just give you the um, brief uh, overview of the expert tool, what expert tool is. So, basically, uh, if you go to this uh, uh, laptop on your devices, you can access it. Uh, so, it's a tool to download OpenStreetMap in different. Uh, GIS formats. Um, so like it will enable you uh, uh, to download a lot of formats um, that is uh, GeoJSON, save file, geo package, and all of the formats, especially for the uh, GIS users uh, from the OpenStreet database. Uh, so the major advantage of Expert Tool is uh, it can extract a lot of, uh, there will be a lot of uh, preset and also as well as static and the dynamic. So you can even uh, define your own preset to download it, or you can set a, a select a preset that is already available and working in uh, your own desired format. So uh, basically, there are um, other functionalities of Expert Tool as well. If you are also familiar with the humanitarian data extents, that is a SDX platform. Expert Tool also pushes the data of OpenStreetMap converts it into the really nice different sub parts uh, and then puts it to the SDX, uh, such as let's say educational uh, places, financial uh, facilities, governmental places, all of those. And then it will divide the data into the multiple um, multiple subcategories. So one of the few, uh, there are some major changes and uh, also I have seen some uh, uh, questions about uh, overpass, overpass turbo as well. So uh, some of the things that uh, Expert Tool um, is right now we are doing on Expert Tool is uh, the main changes of it is um, previously Expert Tool used to depend on the overpass. So what we used to do is we used to read from the overpass. Overpass is also a really great tool to provide our data. You may have used the front-end version of it that uh, utilize the API uh, overpass turbo. Uh, so similarly, Expert Tool also uses the I used to use the overpass. So we used to have a problem, a couple of problems with the uh, overpass. And if you have also noticed, um, the main problem is like uh, uh, it was not uh, reliable and fast for us. Uh, so whenever we want to do download our expert, sometimes it goes uh, one hour ago, ago. Even if you right now look into it, uh, overpass is uh, behind an hour ago. And sometimes it used to go beyond days. Uh, and uh, the large extraction were not possible. And due to this region, we are making some changes and we are working on, uh, there is a tool called Underbus that we are maintaining. Uh, and uh, it also the, it's, it's also the same tool that uh, is being used for the data quality issues. And uh, it uh, kind of uh, uh, monitors the real time database of the uh, um, OSM. So even if you uh, see it right now, the, um, uh, our uh, database updated just one minute ago. Uh, meanwhile, uh, yeah, we have some issues with others. So what we are doing is uh, we are trying to change the source of it. Uh, and what it, what does it mean to the general users? What does it mean uh, for the people like us who are interested on the tech uh, is 
now we can download the data uh, which is almost real time uh, like uh, within uh, one or two minutes uh, and then uh, uh, we can export the data very quickly and on a lot of data formats. So I will drop a link here. Uh, it is our stage setup. So currently we are working on it and all of our changes are uh, deployed to the stage, which I really want to, um, you know, so we are on the testing phase and you could be a great um, help to check it out. Uh, so like how the data set works. Uh, uh, I will also so guess like how we can export it and what are the major difference that you may notice with the overpass with the, the if you compare it to the overpass or buster or even the previous version of expert tool that is the production version of the expert tool. Um, so currently what we do is uh, I will check out uh, uh, file formats. So there are some couple of new formats that is uh, um, if you are interested on, uh, let's say, if you are a database guy, you want a SQL and you want to analyze the data by yourself, is uh, we now support the SQL, uh, CSV, and the flat geobuff. So flat geobuff is basically a, a new file format uh, which was introduced to, uh, you know, load a very uh, large format of the data. It contains uh, contains index on it, uh, and all of those formats is. Uh, all of those formats is reading from our new uh, data source that is underpass instead of the overpass. So if you notice the, uh, I will just refresh that, uh, that you will get the almost real time data out of it uh, for those file formats from this stage setup. Uh, I will just quickly show you one uh, example of it. Like, uh, uh, let's say, uh, okay, I want to download some area uh, over here and then I will say, uh, test uh, from the program. And if you notice that uh, this is actually in our minute and second ago. So um, yeah, we are working on the improving the, the way we represent it here, just like this. Um, and then it updated one minute ago. So if you, um, let's say I will download a GeoJSON and now expert tool also supports download all OS data. So you can actually, the way we maintain our source is uh, uh, now we plan it to do uh, bigger experts with the, all of the data in it. So not only the buildings, not only commercial, if you are uh, using, let's say, a plugin like quick OSM on QGIS, you may have noticed that you cannot download more than, uh, you know, uh, all of the features or on a, on a bigger area, if you want to do some analysis in your district, in your country or region. Um, so uh, that's the main purpose of it that uh, we want to, like, uh, even if you want to download all OSM data, it would be available and then you can just uh, publish the expert. Expert tool is also kind of uh, works as a open source, uh, uh, you know, open source uh, data sharing platform. So you can even uh, expert, let's say, uh, I will be uh, experting my city or uh, so um, health services of my city that I want to be available for everyone so that they don't need to expert it, right? They can download it directly uh, while coming from the expert. So it is also the possibility. So if you create an expert and then um, you will see like how fast it is and then you will get the data out of it. And uh, uh, meaning uh, from the all, uh, let's say like when expert will say is download all data, what you can actually do is you can extract all of the uh, attributes in the area. So um, if I, let's say I'll download and I'll showcase to you what it means. Um, So that um, let's say you can do the down uh, analysis by yourself without restricting yourself from the data that is not, you know, OSM data. Um, yes. Um, and then uh, okay, Let's just see if I can load it. This is the name of it. Okay. I just quickly load it in the in my QGIS so that I will showcase you that how the attributes are displayed and uh, how the data uh, will be. So uh, what we are currently uh, working on and what we are currently looking at is uh, uh, our new data sources really capable of uh, exporting the relation features very efficiently as well. So if you see, uh, I exported um, area where I near the city where I live uh, and then I exported whole, whole you know, uh, country boundary of it. 
uh, and if I if I show you, uh, there will be a uh, in my area. I expected welding, and then yeah, you'll have all of it within a few couple of seconds. And uh, when we talk about the attributes, you can extract anything in that area. Let's say I want building, then I will extract it from the JSON. You can just run a simple query builder on the QGIS or whatever the platform you are using. Um, and uh, okay, one another thing is uh, what we actually want to uh, test out of it is uh, for the general users. Like we are looking for the you know suggestions that. If you notice something, let's say you download it, you are a you are interested. Who is interested on the CSV? Okay, I want to download the area and the CSV. And expert tool will expect you all the let's say I expected buildings or health services in my area. It will expect the sent to it as well. So yeah, like do check out all of those formats that are available and also all of those new uh, formats. And then um, you can check. Uh, the accuracy of it, uh, meaning what I mean by accuracy is like you can even check if some features are missing or not. Um, even though that is not uh, the case that we are expecting, but yeah, you can check whatever the whatever you feel like from the data, either it is uh, really available or not. And other part of it is uh, we actually maintain the API of it so that uh, if you see uh, if you are a technical user, then you can also even use our API that is on the staging setup. Um, and then after after the uh, after we're done with the testing, it will go live. And this is our API. It has a documentation how you can use the API. And the one of the major advantages of it is you can build your own tool out of the API. You can build uh, one some simple JavaScript function, and then you can build your tool to download the. You know, you can automate the process. You can download the area in yourself. Um, uh, just like I do give you an overview of what I mean by that is this is a simple uh, JavaScript or HTML I created out of the API to showcase like how you can um, actually use the API in order to build your uh, own kind of front end, you know, so that uh, let's say like you can um, deploy it to wherever you want using the API and it, it, this API will also support all of those formats that I have just uh, listed. And then you can do all a more analysis on it. Uh, so just to showcase you, like uh, even if I downloaded, uh, this is the capital of my country. Uh, so it expired in 42 second. So I downloaded everything inside this. Uh, this uh, geosation is actually of 333 MB that used to take a uh, you know couple of minutes, maybe hour before that is uh, available within few minutes now. Uh, from the expert tool and from the API itself. Um, I think uh, that's uh, there were a few features that you can actually now uh, download the tasking managers if if you are a, a dedicated map but that you want to uh, export the tasking manager area. Uh, that is also now possible with the expert tool. You can simply um, type the tasking manager project ID and then it will go to the tasking manager. It will fetch that boundary for you and then you can actually download okay this is our uh, i think bangladesh disaster project and then paste task manager and uh, okay i can i can expert let's say let's expert all of those supported uh, from the galaxy and then let's download the buildings out of it um and if you create a expert then all of those experts will be listed one by one for you so that you can download it you can play with it uh, uh, and this integration is also supported so that you can, you know, visualize the task manager data as well. So, yeah, do test it uh, to, yeah, so results came back and then it will start popping up one by one, another, and then you can download it and play with it. So this is where I will go through the questions. Uh, if you have any, uh, okay. As long as data, I, I will also maybe I can showcase some formats, or you can actually I it would be great if you can test it by yourself. Um, okay, how accurate? Uh, Derek uh, says how accurate is it? It's it is. Uh, so what we do is we maintain, uh, we update our database every minute uh, from the OpenStreetMap server. So the data you are getting from the expert tool, um, getting from the API should be all accurate. 
so if there is anything like a since it is a, it is also something that we are testing about but we are expecting it to be very accurate um the way as it is in our uh you know in a OSM. so what we can uh mm, the what we can uh do from the api as well is we can ex actually export a mp task out of it so that you can even load a base map of the osm you know uh into the like uh, like which updates every minute or which updates maybe you can set it for the hour or two hour that is also something um that uh, api supports um currently it has also a format of uh to 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 to, to, to mb tiles, this one so you can even load it as a tile um you can even yep yeah like to if any questions feel free to reach out to me um or if you have any concerns about the api also about the source that we maintain um or if you have any feedback actually please reach out to me petia yeah. thank you so much Kshitish. thank you so much yeah so we uh, yeah i'll stop to see if there are questions and as Kshitish explained we have the live version of the export too he also showed you on staging which i explained is this testing site some of the improvements that now we're trying to test with different users. After the training, I'll send you links as well, like the presentation and then those links with maybe instructions if people are interested. But any other questions on, yeah, specific to export tool? Um, feel free, I'm just looking at, no, hopefully, if no questions, hopefully you found that useful and you've learned um, something new. So for, yeah, as I said, we did a bit of intro of the team, who we are. So hopefully you know now the different people working on different tools. Rob talked again about the tag value appropriateness, mentioned a number of different tools. So if you have more questions on that, he'll be the person to answer. Open aerial map again. Um, we talked about Task Manager very briefly and Kshitish, uh, yeah, be the relevant person for Expo 2. I know we have probably 10 minutes left, so I would say any other questions that maybe are not linked to those two or anything else you want to find out, uh, let's use that uh, that time for, yeah, for questions, anything from your end. Maybe we've answered all your questions. <laughs> Don't be shy or feel free to type um, as well in the chat. No. These tools are much, yeah, good feedback. That's also helpful. <laughs> if you found this helpful, we'll uh, coordinate with Becky. I'll just give it another minute if you think of anything because we have 10 minutes left. Um, Otherwise, I hope now you've met a few of us and you're, you know, who you can reach out to. You can always reach out to me if you're unsure. Um, and let's see. Okay. So we have a question. That's great from Daniel. Is something being done about how, for example, land use residential covers some feature when you export? Kshitish, do you understand <laughs> the question? Because I think it's related to um, actual export. Yeah, uh, I would like to. I'm not sure I understand this quite well. Well, if you are looking at something specific, let's say you want to download land use re residential by being specific about the key or values, yes, it is completely possible. Or if I didn't get your question, you can, yeah, type it and I can answer. Okay, so what I'm trying to say is um, one time I tried to use the export tool and then when you download the data, um, buildings inside um, areas that has been mapped as residential areas, that residential area seems to create something like a big tile that covers um, the buildings, the individual buildings that has been mapped already. So sometimes you have to change the layers or something has to be done before you'll be able to see the building that has been mapped inside that residential area. I don't know if you still you still don't care what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. Now I got your question. Um yeah, so this is something uh, I was also looking at uh, when I was uh, uh building the 
um, building the shores itself. So the way we are constructing the shores, it should not block you anymore because the, for example, land use residential uh, or like a country, even a country boundary is a very good example that it should not cover you. It will uh, come for you as a poly. So uh, it's, it's not like a, it will be in its own shape. Let's say residential area is a polygon or a, a administrative boundary is a polygon. And then uh, it will come as it is mapped. Uh, all of those relation features, which are, you know, uh, let's say, uh, for example, somebody mapped a polygon and the last node and the first node are the same, then they are converted as a polygon. Uh, and it should not be a uh, issue anymore. Uh, maybe uh, it's, the, it's the same uh, issue that uh, I was also showcasing before on the QGIS, right? So I exported uh, even, uh, I exported the buildings along with the administrative boundaries. So those administrative boundary are actually a polygon and you can play with it. So they will no longer lose the geometry uh, as they used to do before. Okay, great. Thank you both. Anything else from others? Okay. If no questions, I would suggest, so Becky, what I'll do, I'll make sure I share with all of you the slides. I'll share links as well, especially on what Kshidish now explained on Export Tool with the set staging site and like a document if you want to take a look and run some of the exports and you have any feedback or something didn't work, you can do that in there. Um, but yeah, feel free to hope you enjoyed the training, hope it was useful. Uh, and um, I think that's it. The only other thing we were thinking with Becky, we can take a group. Oops, we have another question. There we go. Uh, I'm not sure if you'll be able. So Manish is asking about a review process for uh, for uploaded imagery. I know that DK has left, so I'm not 100% sure um, if anyone else in our team would know that, but I can note this down and then let you know. I don't think there is, but yeah, anyone else from our team who might know from the tech team about checks, whether when you approve an imagery, there's kind of a, um, not validation, but uploads. Uh, I'm not sure, I'll note this down and then I'll respond as I follow up in the email um, on this one because I know DK had to go to another meeting, so he's not here yet. Uh, review system for upload imagery. Okay. Yeah, I'll get back to Manish on this one. Any other questions? Just not it No. Okay. Uh, if not, I don't know, Becky, if you want to take a <laughs> take a photo, if you can support with that, if people are happy to. And uh, then I'll leave. Yeah, I'll leave everyone to continue with their day evening. Awesome. Um, thank you so much, Petya. And again, I wanted to just thank the tech team. I realized we literally carried the entire team for the data quality internship. I really appreciate. Uh, we appreciate your time and the uh, preparations and everything, literally. Thank you so, so, so much. Hope uh, hope we got one or two things from this session. And yeah, this is a very good opportunity to capture all the data um, rather to capture all the tech team into our album. So I'm very, very happy to take uh, a photo of us. So please feel free to turn on your cameras if you can, so that we can take. We have um, two screens. <laughs> okay. So I'll, I'll take one by one. Please keep smiling just in case you're in the <laughs> other. <laughs> The other part, I'm giving a few seconds for cameras to turn on. Okay. Um, yeah, most of us are there. Um, 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 Angela and Daniel, just in case you want to, I'm giving you like two seconds. All right. Uh, nice. So I'm going to start.
this is screen one. Just saving it so I don't lose it. All right. Uh, then the second one. Nice. Right. Good exercise on smiling. <laughs> we'll continue. Hopefully, we'll continue smiling after the session. But lovely to see you all and yeah, enjoy your internship. Yeah, just reach out to us if you have other questions. So awesome. Thank you. Thank Bye, you. everyone. Have a great day, evening, or night, wherever you yeah. are. I'll share all the details on our channel. Bye, everyone. Yeah, Bye. Uh, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.